were there enough situations in the game for you to put put players in real game situations? Uh, you know, there there weren't quite enough. Um, situations that we could come up with you know we wanted to work we got a chance to work four minute offense at the end there uh when we were able to slow it down at the end we put uh blaine stewart back there at running back because we didn't feel like we needed to run any of those other guys anymore and uh so uh we put blaine back there and we wanted to work on our four minute offense just trying to eat up the rest of the game clockwise as much as we could so we did get some work there um you know we got some of our different looks on our kickoff team worked uh, uh, you know, to get some of our, to get uh, Tyler Gray in the game to kick off was good for us to see him. Uh, he kicked a couple out of the end zone early, so his adrenaline was going, and and then uh, he was able to settle down and give us the kicks that we needed later on. Uh, so yeah, we did. We, we got a couple things work. We didn't get as as many. Hopefully, we'll continue to to get some. Uh, some situations worked early in the year, so we can you know we can really focus on getting them done the way we want to get them done. How about the opportunities for newcomers? Uh, some that were uh, transfers, others that are true freshmen. Yeah, uh, if you look at true, if you look at freshmen, we played 13 freshmen in the ball game. Uh, that's offense, defense, and kicking. Uh, I looked out there on one of the kickoffs, and there was probably eight, nine freshmen out there running down on the kickoff, and they did a great job. I mean, uh, like I said, Steve Smallwood played really well uh, as a true freshman in the kicking game. Uh, I thought uh, Curtis Oliver did some good things in game one, really did some good things. Obviously, Rashad Robinson had an interception, did a nice job of, of playing a route concept that we'd worked all week and, and came up with the play. Uh, so I felt like there were some guys that played well. A.J. Gray, Gray got a chance to go in and tackle and play. Uh, so, uh, again, I, you know, getting some of those guys in the game were kind of key for us uh, to get them game reps and to try to see if they're game ready. Uh, we felt like uh, most of those guys did exactly uh, what they needed to do in their job description. Uh, so, uh, you know, game one, you know, again, check that box off. We got some experience for our young guys. All right, game two is also a home game, the uh, second of six regular season home games this Saturday, welcoming in the Mountain Hawks of Lehigh, 4 o'clock kickoff. Uh, Lehigh opened with a 20-14 to 14 win at Central Connecticut State. Coach, going back, this is, uh, this is the first time that you'll face a team for the second time or a, a program for the second go-round in, in your tenure here at James Madison. Uh, as you go back to last year's come-from-behind win, 31-28, to 28, how important was that? for setting the tone for your season last year? Well, I, I think it was. Obviously, it was, you know, we were on the road. Uh, we, had a, we had some circumstances in that ball game with the lightning delay and, and all the things that went on with that game. It was a very hot day uh, uh, at Lehigh last year. And I thought our kids, we didn't play real well in the first half, and we came back and we started playing better in the second half. And I thought we did some things really well on both sides of the ball and in the kicking game. So uh, having that experience playing Lehigh, we, we, we feel uh, a little bit more comfortable because we know, you know, uh, what they want to try to do offensively. They're a quarterback late in the offense. They want to be able to run it, throw it, and the quarterback's the key to their offense. I think Coach Cohen's done a really good job of, of uh, after last year, them having a disappointing season. Uh, Lehigh has a lot of history. I feel like that, you know, getting them back on track is what they're trying to do. This is a big game for them. It's a big game for us, obviously, but a big game for them to go on the road and kind of test and see where they are. So um, um, it's good to have, have played them in the past. Every year the teams are different. Uh, they're different ball teams, but uh, we're excited about the opportunity to play this squad. Their quarterback is Nick Shavsniski, and uh, last year uh, he passed for nearly a – 2,500 yards last weekend, 19 of 23, 263 yards. He is a dual threat. Uh, maybe his, his arm might be a little bit more of a threat than his feet, but uh, how, do you, how do you account for him? Well, I, you know, Kurt, I have to disagree. I think he's, he's just as big a threat with his legs. Uh, they run a lot of Q counter, a lot of Q lead with him. Uh, uh, you know, I think he had 83 yards rushing last week. Uh, he's... he's He's one of those guys he can break uh, – when the play breaks down in the passing game, he can take off and get you, get you positive yards. So uh, he's, a, he's a very, very uh, capable guy at quarterback, and, uh, you know, both with his arms and his legs. So uh, he's our number one guy. We've got to make sure we do a good job of taking care of him this week. 
Dom Bragg alone was the uh, leading ball carrier for him last week as well, 17 carries for 68 yards against Central Connecticut. Uh, among him and others offensively, what are the others uh, that you do have to key on? Well, I, I think you just said it, two, uh, the two running backs, both, both are true freshmen. Uh, both were true freshmen and, uh, uh, you know, both had good days running the football, successful, didn't turn the ball over. Uh, Brad Gellion, I don't know how to say that name, 68 yards for seven, on 17 carries, did a nice job. Did, did, uh, you know, I just got through watching uh, some things that he did in the, in the run game, protected the ball, ran really hard. They tried to win the game there at the end, a four-minute offense in the game, and they did a nice job of killing the clock there at the end of the game with their run game. So uh, very, very uh, – very, uh, I guess, impressed with their run game with those two freshman running backs. Uh, you know, they had two receivers uh, that played well for them. Uh, you know, they both, you know, caught over 50 yards in, in, in passes. Both had six, uh, six and seven catches, respectively, uh, in the ball game. And they didn't have their number one guy who went and only played uh, 26 plays. Um, so, you know, we have to figure out uh, – you know, do they have uh, their, their top go-to guy uh, in their offense? Because he, uh, he went out, he got, he got uh, hurt in the golf ball game and don't know if he's going to be back or not. Their leading tackler last week was Colton Caslow. He had 17 stops. He's 6'1", 215. Were they, do they funnel to the linebacker? or what, How did he get in on so many stops? Well, I think he's a very active linebacker. You know, uh, you know, they've got two. They've got uh, Noah, Noah Robb had seven tackles. So they've got two linebackers that they, they really try to uh, feature, and uh, they cover up, and they run a fast flow to the ball. So they do a nice job. Uh, uh, I think last year they were disappointed in how their defense played, and I think that's one of their goals is to play better run defense this year. So um, I think we expect a better defensive effort uh, from them this year. All right, anything else uh, from Lehigh that you'd like to add at this no, point, I, Coach? No, you know, I think this is a tough football team. I think Coach Coyne's done a really good job of, of uh, you know, instilling toughness in their football team. That's kind of our theme of the week, toughness. We want to win. We want to try to win the line of scrimmages on both sides of the ball this week. We feel like if we do that, we'll have a great opportunity to win the game. Um, so this is going to be a battle, I think, of toughness up front on both the offensive and defensive lines. That's going to be our motto of the week, kind of our theme of the week. Last week our, our motto was discipline. This week it's going to be toughness. All right, let's turn it over to other members of the media here at O'Neill's Grill. Gentlemen. Coach, looking at the big picture of this program and you look back at how the team went into game one last year, how would you describe the growth of your team as we talk about year two of the journey? Well, uh, you know, I think – you know, there's, there's 60, 65, 70 guys that have a, a familiar uh, way about the way we do things. They understand what we do and how we do them. I think, I think understanding not what we do, but why we do it and how we do it is really important. And we've got, a, we've got a larger group of guys. Last year, none of those guys had any idea why we do certain things. I mean, we do some – I mean, you guys are not, not privy to a lot of stuff. We do some really outrageous stuff, and, uh, and, and it's, it's all for a reason. It's all for, for, for a reason to get ready for those Saturdays. And uh, uh, last year, those guys had no idea. This year, those guys, they were able to come in and teach some of the young guys, hey, on, on Tuesday, this is what you're getting. On Wednesday, this is what you're getting. On Thursday, this is what you're getting. On Friday, this is what you're getting. When you wake up on Saturday morning, come with your you know, mind right because it's going to be you know, right in your face. So uh, I think just the, the guys have a familiar way about the way we do it, and uh, I think that's helped. And I think it's made our progression going into U2, U2 a little bit smoother. You were able to play a lot of reserves um, in, in game one, um, and one of your goals going into the season was to get depth as much yep. as possible. How comfortable are you now or confident are you now with the depth that you have coming out of game one? Well, I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's ongoing. Uh, it's ongoing. I think we've got, you know, we, we got to start by getting some of those young guys uh, in the game. Uh, the Brandon Herfords, the Demetri Holloways, and those guys. Demetri played really well uh, for a freshman. Now, can he play that at a little bit better uh, opponent this week, a little bit tougher opponent, a little bit more skilled opponent this week? So step two has to be done this week. Hopefully we keep those guys an opportunity to play this week, and they play better. And uh, hopefully, like I said, that, that uh, from, from game one to game two, boy, you want to see that jump in your team, and that's hopefully what we'll get. 
I'm only bringing this up because everyone's talking about this Virginia Tech Ohio State game and with your prior Ohio State connection. Uh, what did you learn um, in your time there from Urban Meyer in terms of leadership that you bring to your team um, when talking about JMU? Um, you're, you're not only uh, trying to mentor and, and teach and guide football players, but you're trying to mentor and teach young people and young men. And uh, uh, it, it's kind of neat. If you, I mean, if you guys ever get the opportunity, and I'm sure it's that way with Frank Beamer and his program at Virginia Tech, uh, there's something about watching a young man go from when he walks in the door as a freshman to when he's a sophomore, junior, and see, and see him grow, and see him grow not just on the field as a football player, but uh, off the field and some of the things that they do and, and grow and, 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 and uh, get better at. So I, I guess I've learned a, a lot about, you know, trying to work on every part of the young man's life, not just, you know, the football part. You know, it's easy to say, make him a good football player. He goes to school on his own. Uh, his free time, he's on his own. And, and what you get is you get, you get a guy that plays football good, but he doesn't grow up in all – he doesn't mature in a lot of other areas. And I think the goal is trying to get young people to mature in a lot of other areas. They're, they're going to be fathers. They're going to be employees. They're going to be business owners. They're going to be a lot of things. They're not gonna, most of them are going to be football players, okay? After they get done here, most of them – I mean, nearly all of them are. Um, so how, what have you done to teach them how to be better people and better citizens besides be really good football players? I think that's the biggest thing I learned from, from being around uh, Coach Meyer. Coach, you talked about the penalties. Uh, you addressed it in your post game. You've got to clean those up. Now that you've had a chance to look back at game film, what's your assessment of the infractions that were called against you? And, and, and was it just being overzealous, nerves, first game, energy, or, or were there some, some things you really got to clean up? Uh, I, you know, I thought a couple of them were bad calls, <laughs> just to be perfectly honest. Uh, I thought I think Austin Lane had a, 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 a legal procedure call that was a bad call. Um, I think some of the perimeter blocking things are going to happen early. Uh, we got guys that are that are blocking, and they, you know, you have to move your feet. You know, the, the football is played from the waist down. People want to say it's played with your pads. Football's played from the waist down. And if you don't get yourself in position with your feet and you're blocking, you're going to hold. And uh, that happened, I think, to Ishmael Hyman twice. I think John Miller had a block in the back. Uh, so we had some of those things go on. Um, so, I, I, you know, there are things that we can correct. Again, we, we, we went to practice yesterday. We worked on a couple things. We worked on perimeter blocking with our wide outs, and we worked on tackling with our entire defense. So we put on shoulder pads yesterday. We went out and practiced, and we, we, we get those things done. Uh, you have to make an emphasis on it, and I think we, we will as a staff make an emphasis this week on cutting down the number of penalties and hope that we uh, see some, uh, uh, some things corrected this week. One of the things you said you wanted to do is stay ahead of the chains, be more yeah. efficient on first and second down. Obviously, with the, the amount of yards and the points you put up, you're fairly efficient, but looking at it play by play, were you pleased with what you are able to do on first and second down? Yeah, I thought we did some good things. I didn't like the way we started the second half uh, on offense. You know, it's not how we want to start the second half. Uh, we had the ball on the ground there. And I think the first play, first or second player of the second half. Uh, so we didn't want to do that. But there were some things that we did well to keep, keep the chains moving. Um, you know, one of the things that we want to do, you know, on offense is obviously stay ahead of the chains, but on defense stay ahead of the chains. And, and uh, one of the things that we have to do better is, is we've got we've to win more first downs on defense. We've got to win more first downs, get them in second and long. Conversely, hopefully get them in third and long. We, we had too many third and three, two, ones on defense, and we've got to kind of get – we've got to find a way to stop that. And, and how you do that, you win first down. So we've got to continue to get better at that. And if you will, talk about the dog walk a little bit. You do pregame. Yeah. Uh, I was able to watch it for the first time. and was kind of surprised not as many people were coming up to, to, to approach your players. Address that, if you will, and how, how you like the fan base to respond to the dog walk prior to the games at home. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, this, this team is really the, the team of the community and, and the area. So uh, one of the things we want to do is just put that out there, get that to our, our, to our fans uh, out there that are tailgating in Godwin and – Across the street, we change the dog walk a little bit. We go across the street over into the uh, uh, parking lot and walk down. And, and, and I and I think it's, you know, whether people want to don't want to leave their tailgates or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what it is. But uh, it, it's uh, it's kind of a tradition that we want to we want to start and and keep going. Uh, 
you know, we want to enhance it and make it better. Uh, but it's, it's basically to show uh, support to the community and the fans that are out there in the tailgates that, hey, we want to mingle and we want you to see your team before they get ready to go into battle. I think guys did their job. They had a job description. They did their jobs. Well, I, yeah, I think they have a. I think they have a little bit more of an intention to run the game, run the ball. Uh, whereas I think uh, Moorhead may not have thought they could run the ball, and they their running game was their quick passing game. Um, so I think this week we'll see a little bit more of the true. Uh, run game, somebody trying to attack us running the football. Does a quarterback like that concern you? Just, I mean, how much thought goes into preparing for a guy like that when you face maybe one or two a year like that? Well, anytime you play uh, spread offenses, offenses that use their quarterback in the run game, yeah. they, he's got to be a, a factor. I'm sure people say the same thing about us with our right. quarterback. I mean, he adds, that's the guy you have to account for. And a lot of times when you're playing traditional offenses, you never account for the quarterback. Anytime you're playing those kind of offenses, you have to account for I know you said they had a little bit of a disappointing year last year, but still early in the week. What Did you notice any differences between their team this year and last year maybe? Anything well, they, I only have one game of, right. uh, of uh, you know, show right. this year to prep, to, to see. We went back and watched some of last year's game. They mm -hmm. lost some leads late. Yeah. Uh, I thought they played pretty well on offense last year. They just gave up some, some uh, scores late on defense. But, I, I, again, I think they're going to be a well-coached team. They're going to be a physical team. Uh, I think they're going to be in the right spots. Uh, we're, we're going to have to go out and play well and win the game. All the numbers you put up, are you as good as those stats show? I mean, or are those numbers? You know, I, I, do you I, I, I'm not a stat guy, yeah. so you're asking the wrong guy. I'm, that, that's for you guys to worry about, how you know, scores and, and, and points and yardage. I'm not a stat guy. So uh, I'm in the wins. Yeah, that run game you guys had, how much of that was offensive line? I, that's probably something you can see on film. How much was that offensive line versus Cardon and, and Khalid doing their thing? I think it was collectively. Yeah. Both of them. Okay. How, how was the offensive line on film? How, do, how did you they kind of grade well. those guys? I, I thought they played well. The, the couple guys in new spots there, uh, Stenny, I guess, how did he kind of fare in game one? Did, I, thought he played, on him. I thought he played well. Gotcha. And the, the snaps, I guess, from Dom were, were fine. I, I think as he far had as I one. I think he had one that might have rolled or it was low. But uh, other than that, I thought he played well. Gotcha. And those, some of those young guys, I know you talked about it briefly, but seeing them on film and maybe a little more critical on them, was it still very good, I guess, all those guys? I was very impressed with all those kids, the way they play. Let's see. Okay, That's everybody's fine. finished up. That's good. Thank you for joining us here today. Uh, the Dukes taking on the Lehigh Mountain Hawks. Again, kickoff will be at 4 o'clock on Saturday at Bridgeport Stadium. This will be the third meeting between these two, actually the fourth dating back to 1980, as uh, the first time, though, that the Mountain Hawks come here to Bridgeport Stadium. The Dukes do lead the series two games to one. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week here at O'Neill's Grill for our weekly fan and press lunch with JMU head football coach Everett Withers.